uh, a very good Sunday school lesson. Blessings of godliness coming out of Second Peter, first chapter, verses three through fourteen. And it places unknown in the time is about AD sixty four. And the golden text said, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter one, verse eight. And the lesson outline is divine power. Second Peter verses three and four, and discipleship priority. Second Peter verses five through nine, and diligent perseverance. Second Peter ten and eleven, and departure predicted. Second Peter verses twelve through fourteen, and today's aim fact to show the resources we have as Christians to live godly lives and principles, to understand that God has already provided us with all that we need to live godly lives and applications to learn to use the resources God gives us to live the way God wants us to. And at this time, we'll break up the individual Sunday school group. And we, after that, will return back at 945. Someone say 945. 945. Yeah, this now, the first verse here, I say, set the tone. I'll read it. It says, according, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. And divine here is, is, is uh, described as defined as God the power. Amen. And and what what uh, Peter is saying that that <laughs> with God uh, with uh, with God power and love that we're able to accomplish everything that God wants us to do and live the way he wants us to do and also eternal life. And what I like at the end, it says, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. If anyone want to comment on that a little bit? I know you can help me out, D. It says, basically, uh, Deacon uh, Cunningham. Yeah, sure. You know, what he's saying here is the Lord, the Lord is he gave, he gave you everything that you need. I mean, uh, it, it's, a, it's just according to how you want to live by it because he, he didn't put it out there for you. He gave you all the things you want to need, all the things you could ever want to need to survive in this world. So he, he gave you the kindness, the love, the peace, the joy, and all that. So it's really up to you to, to make that choice which way you want to go. Because he yeah, had a very good point from our deacon. Uh, Cunningham said, God has provided everything that we need. As I was reading, it said that if, if, if we don't have what we need, it's because we didn't want it. It's not the death because we do everything else we want. He said, knowledge is wisdom. And he said, he's letting us know. As I was reading, it says that he said that the mighty power of God is given to believers to enable them to live according to God's will. And so he gives us knowledge and they give us the wisdom how to do that. And it's all for his glory. That virtue is mentioned as moral excellence and goodness. And so he, Peter's letting us know because what's going on is uh, and the uh, church is, uh, uh, again, it's a uh, false teacher. And the false teacher was spreading out a lot of false words. So uh, Peter had to go in there and clean that up. And so we all know that God used the people in all ways because we can think about a lot of the bad things that Peter did. Well, you know, he denied Jesus three times. He cut the man ear off. And <clears throat> it just uh, show you how God can turn things around. And so now uh, Peter is actually uh, tell, letting the people know. He's basically telling us to read our Bible. If we don't read our Bible, we have no way to def 
feet uh, to uh, defend ourselves against the enemy. Uh, if they say it's going to show, show up, uh, like I said, my favorite thing when you're dressed real nice and you're at the gas pump and someone's going to say, I think they go to church. <laughs> and, uh, let me go over here and see how saved they are. And ask you a couple of questions and you start reaching for your cell phone. And, and, and it, it don't work. So you have to stay locked and loaded. So we have to read our Bible. But Satan doesn't want us to read our Bibles. So he's equipped us with everything we need, as like Deacon Cunningham said. There are basically, with sum it up, there is no excuse. So if we think that we're going to be able to say when Judgment Day come in and say, well, you know, I didn't read my Bible, that's not going to work. It was there for you to read and you chose not to read. So he turned. He's providing us with all the tools. And some people say that in order to live a Christian life, it's a boring life. But it's actually a beautiful life because you start to grow in Christ. You know, think back uh, when you first started. When I first got to the church, I didn't know any scriptures or anything. No. I just sit back and listen to everybody else. But as I started to read my Bible, I could follow the pastor along the way. There. And that's what he wants to do to grow. Any comments on that? You got anything online for me, D? Uh, number four, it says, uh, whereby uh, given unto us, it seems the great and precious promises of the divine nature and having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so when I was reading about that, uh, some of the uh, promises that he gave us eternal life, uh, answer to prayer, forgiveness of sin, and the Holy Ghost. These, one thing, these are promises. Amen. And one thing we know about the Lord is that he cannot lie. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you got friends, they tell you something right and walk right out your door and say, I ain't going to do that. But the beauty is these are the promises to give. So we don't have to worry about what we have done wrong, this and that. But he's going to forgive us for our sins. That's beautiful. Yeah. So and that is verse 4 for anyone that just came in. We're in uh, uh, Second Peter chapter 1. Right now we're on verse 4. If anyone, good morning. Sister Cassandra, if anyone have any comments on verse 4. Sister Queen up. Um, in my study Bible, I like the comment that it made, and that's uh, covering verse 3 and 4. It says, His power to lead a godly life it doesn't come from within us, but from God. Because we don't have the resources to live full of glory and purpose, God gives, God makes us partakers of the divine nature to keep us from sin and help us live for Him. When we are born again, God, by His Spirit, empowers us. With his own goodness. Amen. Amen. Good point. I thank Sister Queen for that. I, I like the way he said, partake of, mm -hmm. participate, mm -hmm. you know, and to be like Christ. Uh, what he said, uh, uh, escape, uh, uh, escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. It says, a uh, lust is defined as a strong desire. Amen. Something gets a hold of you, and you have to have it. It could be money, a car, a house, and so anything that we put in front of God that becomes our idol. You know, like you can go home today, and you'll see people outside washing their car on Sunday. That's supposed to be a day of worship and rest. That is very important to them. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes it. That's the lust. I got, you know, my car, I got to have this. I got to have this food. I was reading where they were talking about uh, food and things that like that could be a lust. You know, some, some food that we know that's not good for it, hamburgers, Amen. grease, Amen. a lot of grease in it. We eat, we, we eat it anyway. Amen. I see you deep. <laughs> Praise and deep. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You know, when we go back and look at four, right, and, and, and yeah. we see the, we're talking about the, the precious promises, and it says that, so he's giving us the promises, that by these ye might be partakers, and I just love how 
Peter was, was really saying to us that once we commit ourselves to Christ, once we do the due diligence and say we're walking with Christ and, and now you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and all of this, people should be able to see something of the Lord in you. They should be able to see something in us. It doesn't, they don't have to understand completely what it is about you, but they know that there's something different about you. We talk about this all the time about when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you should change the atmosphere of whatever room that you step into. And this is, this is what Peter was talking about, these promises, and that once you have these promises, people should see that in you. I, I, I like what Jake and uh, Mary was saying. They should be able to see something in you. Even though the world may not be saved, they can tell when you are not doing something right. Mm -hmm. And so they, they will... Harp in on that. The first thing they always say, I told you he would say, took the uh Cassandra. Praise the Lord, thanks. It's so nice to be back in the house of the Lord. Oh, thanks to the Lord. Um, I was looking at number four, and I'm gonna tell you what I thought deep was going with that. I really, I really love the way you brought it out because it says, whereby we are given to us exceeding great and perfect precious promises, that by these promises we can be partakers of the divine nature. Of the divine, uh, yeah, nature, and having escaped. So, so to be a partaker of the divine nature, I just prayed just, just yesterday. Um, I don't know why yesterday, but I said, Lord, I need your help. Amen. You promised me that if I asked you, see, He gave me that promise. You promised me if I asked you, you would help me. Amen. You would cleanse me. Amen. You would uphold me with your righteous right hand. I said it just like that, right? Because that promise. Gave me the confidence to go to the throne. Amen. The confidence going to the throne helps me to be partake of his divine nature. Right? And that's why. So, and then the last one is this, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Lust is like a gravitational pull. And the only way you want to escape that gravitational pull is through being a partake of divine nature. And those promises help you to do that. Very good point. So, Sister Cassandra, that we are partakers. I like what she said. The only way you're going to escape the lust is through these. You're going to have to figure out a way to get rid of those things that you're holding on to that you know that are not like Christ. You know. Anyone else have a comment before we go to verse 5? Says, and beside this, Given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtuous knowledge. And I think Deacon Mary was saying that uh, every year you should be able to be a little better. Uh, you know, I should be able to tell, like I said, if I was in the same position I was now for that was when I joined the church, then I didn't have any growth. Right. I have to be able to, uh, I want to be better. Right. I wanted to, first when I started, I had to read my scriptures out of the Bible, but that's not what I wanted to do. But eventually I got where I could remember some. And that's where we, we want to strive to, to uh, add to your faith. You don't have to have, you need simple faith. Because when you first get saved, you, you, see, you just need to believe. Right. Amen. Amen. Just need to believe. Right. God would do the rest. Amen. He would do the rest. You're going to believe that you're going to get to church, even though sometimes you're not feeling well. Right. And then you end up in church because you believe. Lord, I don't know. It was an hour ago, I didn't feel too good. But now you drive down. The road. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't think I get your name right. Yeah, I'm unfortunate. I'm sorry. Because you, you, know, you, you don't feel like you're going to make it to church. By the time you know it. I can't hear you. Can you Sorry, but I was worshiping. I was just saying. I was just worshiping the Lord. I didn't have to come in. Sorry. <laughs> I was just worshiping. Amen. Amen. Does anyone else have a deep prayer? I see you. Amen. You know, deep, you were just talking about growth, right? And I want to be clear about this growth. You should be constantly grown. But I want to be clear. It doesn't mean facts. It doesn't mean speedily. You should just be grown. Baby steps are still steps. 
And so a lot of times we think that somebody should be where we are or they should be further along. And yes, if you're five years in, 10 years in walking with Christ, you shouldn't be where you were day one. But understand that life does happen and we have to continuously grow. It has to be some sign of growth is taking place. And so we have to remember that. So yes, maybe maybe you started out reading through the Bible this year, last year, and you only made it to Exodus. But then you should be telling yourself, you know what, next year I need to, I need to get down to Ezra. And then after that, I need to get to the New Testament. And you know, there's got to be some type of growth. It has to be that virtuous, that goodness, that, that knowledge that we're now talking about. You have to grow. We have to grow. Because when we stop growing, what happens is the enemy shows us something new. And we don't know how to fight it because we didn't continue to grow. Yeah, let's talk about that growth, though, right? And, 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 and Deke is absolutely right. I want to pile on top of that. You should see yourself growing, but others should see you growing, too. If I look at a plant and I see my plant beginning to bud, and then overnight I come back, and I can see it made more progress, I should be able to see it, Amen. not just you. Because you know why? A man's always right in his own eyes. Oh, yeah, I'm all right. Are you really, though? Are you, though? If you think you're all right, you're probably not. But others should see growth as well. Yeah, you know what? I sure thought Sister Cassie was going to say going on, but she didn't. Oh, my God. God, there is a God in heaven. I mean, you people should see you grow as well, not just you think you grow, right? Because we can always judge our own self. But others should see our growth. Amen. Amen. Deacon Cunningham, thank you so much. I agree with everything you said, but I also think that when you're growing, it's a slow process too, because you just can't run out there and start growing and growing. Like you're growing, but you got to understand what you're doing. Amen. You got to understand that your growth has to be in you, you know, like you said, everybody does see things, but you got to understand what's going on. Right. You don't understand it, then you're not doing anything. Right. Amen. I was thinking about how, you know, as a child, uh, from an infant, you know, they have, uh, you know, they grow and they go through stages and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, being saved is the same thing, you know, right. uh, as everyone was saying. Right. I really agree with everything and I love it. I love how they put all, all the points of course. But like as a little child, you're watching that child grow and, you know, watching as they uh, start to crawl, start to pull up, start to walk, right. and you see their growth. Mm -hmm. At the time, they don't see it. They don't know what's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. But as, you know, you watch that child and as they grow and grow and grow, like a little Alex, he's like hiding in the little table. The next thing you know, he's walking under the bigger table. I mean, walking, he actually walking under the table. Right. The next thing, he can't walk under the table. He's bumping into the table. Right. And he's above the table. Right. And, you know, you know, if you follow that growth, you know, mm -hmm. so it's about the same, you know, when you grow in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to, uh, you know, go through different things. You're actually going to fall. You're going to do this, that, and the other. But you're still going to keep growing. And you learn from all of that. And you just, you know, uh, you keep growing. And if you continue to uh, read the word of God, yes, you're going to grow. Because mm -hmm. I was, uh, like, I would say stagnated for a while. You know, I got so where I just go and listen to the preacher, read the scriptures as they did, and go home and do whatever else, read the word now and then. I'm just telling myself, I'm very truthful. Right? Read the word now and then. And then sometimes I'll read more, sometimes I'll read less. And I pray. I, I more than I read. Um, but it's not, you're not going to really flourish or grow properly doing that. And I found that out. So, like, when you find things out, you have to do better. So, God will, you know, let you see yourself where you're growing, where you are. Even if uh, you think you're someplace, He's going to let you know, no, you're not there. Right. You're not there. 
and let you know what you got to do to get there. And all that worry is coming to the preacher or teacher, and if you listen to them and um, do what they say, you actually grow a little faster. That's if you, um, you know, um, that's if you want to. It has to be your choice. If you want to, if not, well, you're still going to be sad. Right. Okay. I, I really mm -hmm. like the, all of the comments. Yeah. Thank you, saying You got to grow. I just to see you grow. And I was reading in the Bible where it said that when we first come into the church, we are babes in Christ. That's right. And so even like when me, I my mind was that I could read this Bible here and I would be okay. But he said not going to reveal it. It took steps for me to get to where I needed to go. And he said that we had thawed you out on milk right. because you're not ready for the meat part. Right. And so sometimes we think we can read this and get it all. But he said he's not going to reveal it to us all the time. But like I appreciate what everyone's saying. That everyone, even you, should be able to see yourself. Like uh, Dick and Mary analogy was, if you didn't get to but Exodus, then you should strive to get further than Exodus uh, next year. Or uh, my thing is, the devil tries to keep me from reading the Bible. So the way I do it is, I just defeat him. I read it when I first get up. There you go. So he can't get in the well of the way and say do this and do that. I go ahead and get it out the way. So now I don't have to worry about something happening that I don't perceive as. I was going to have to do, and then you'll be so tired when you get home, you don't read the Bible. And like Sister Queen is say, you cannot stay, you cannot misread the scriptures. Maybe someone has photographic memory, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for all that comes. I'm going to read uh, verse, uh, I want to read two verses. Verse 6 says that to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. And verse 7 says, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. And so, as I was reading, anyone I have a comment on, on, on temperance? The temperance, uh, I, I had a definition for temperance written down. Um, I didn't write it down. But as I was reading the verse, uh, Six and seven, it says, uh, but did he, uh, the charity part, it, it says that, uh, I, I got it. In, in this list, it was said it was similar to the uh, fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was one of my favorite Galatians 5 and 22, mm -hmm. because the one that he always, the one that's always on top, and I say it all the time. It's love. That's the first one. And I said, I always told Pastor Brown when we were traveling or something about that, I said, I believe that if you take care of love, everything else will fall in place. Right. That's just my opinion. Right. Uh, Sister Queen, I see your hand. Okay, yeah. The meaning for temperance, uh, the quality of love and temperance, the quality of moderation or self-restraint. There you go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And so, and so, um, and so the Bible says that we should be temperate in all things, moderate in all things, right? That means balance in all things. We're not supposed to go overboard either way to the left. And that's why we tell them don't go to the left or to the right. Stay in the middle on the path where I am. That's where God is. God is in the middle, right? Um, and I like the way this whole lesson builds on itself, right? Because we start out in verse three and four where he said you have the access to these exceeding and precious promises. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets to five, he said, and besides this, to me, he said, and on top of that, giving all diligence, diligence means persistence and sobriety when you're sober about things, when you're diligent, right? You, can, you continue to, uh, to, to, to focus on whatever you need to focus on. Diligence is like a focus, it's like a laser focus. When you add, when you're diligent, he said, then add to your faith virtue. Do all of that. Access those exceeding precious promises because they help you to be a partaker of divine nature. But then start adding, diligently add to your faith virtue. Amen. And then the virtue knowledge, right? It, it all builds on itself. It's a beautiful um, scripture that, that Peter brought out to us, uh, a beautiful word that he gave to us in his writing. Amen. Amen. That's a good point, Dad. I, I finally did find temperance as a self control. And uh, 
controlled in the fashion. Uh, Deacon um, Mary. Amen. Such a concern was reading my mind, right? Because I wanted to po point out verses five, six, and seven. They all start with the word and, yep. but in between, you see that semicolon. It's a continuation. Right. It's it's to let us know there's more to it than just. So if you're saying that uh, uh, I've added faith to virtue, but then all of a sudden you stopped and didn't add the knowledge with the repentance and didn't do the godliness and your brotherly kindness, you're missing some things. Some things. So it's it's a continuation that we must continue yeah. to add these things on a daily basis or as much as possible. Right. Amen. I like what's said then. Continuation. And so I like it's when they close it out, says patience, you know, and that, that so many times we don't have that patience. You know, things are not gonna really go the way we want. Temperance is self-control, self-control, but you need the patience to go with that. So sometimes, you know, if we respond too quick and we just would have waited a little longer, it would have turned out better yeah. for us. And I've done that where I just well, I, I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. Then I found out if I would just wait with the patient just a little longer, be patient. The Lord had it all figured out, but I'm this microwave person, you know. I want to do everything real quick, here, and it ended up uh, turning out to be not as good as he wants to. So we have to have patience and godliness. You know, godliness uh, is a uh, living uh, a life uh, like God. So we we should want to be like God. That's what we that's the ultimate thing. She want to be like him, that godliness, and we can do that. Uh, Bishop uh, Landy said that uh, his one of his favorite sayings was that we can uh, we can have fun here on earth and go to heaven at the same time Amen. being a Christian. So some people think that it's a boring life. We Christian life is a fun life, yes. Man. Very fun. Like, yes, I man. have just as much fun as I did when I was in the world. Amen. I spent a whole lot of money. I don't know what. I sent somebody to college, probably. But it's a fun life. You're learning. You're growing. I love being around Christian. I love when Brother Dustin or all y'all come in. I just get excited. Amen. But it's, that's what it is. And it's number seven, it says, God is brotherly. It says, brotherly love. And it says, uh, and charity is love. And so, and Bible says that we have to show love to everyone, and even our fam family members. I think Pastor Brown mentioned it sometimes. Just sometimes when you have these uh, family picnics, you know it's going to be one in the family that that, that might cost you to almost lose your Holy Ghost. But we have to, we have to, we have to love them also. And so I like when the, when the Bible says that. He said, Jesus says, how can you say you love me who you never seen and hate your enemy who you see every day? You, but what he's saying is that if we don't have that love, Galatians 5, 22, all of that, everything we do, Paul said, he mentioned Bible, it's going to be for nothing. So if I don't love you, if I don't like you, it's just going to, all this other stuff, whatever I did that was good, it's going to appear to be good. It's not going to be worth anything. Right. All right. Did you have a comment, D? This lesson also taught me something different. This is totally aside from what we were talking about, that when they talk about the brotherly love piece, right, immediately I started thinking about Philly, right, Philadelphia. And then I learned, I did the research and learned that Philadelphia, the word itself is a Greek word coming from two different words uh, uh, in the Greek language meaning brotherly and that's where they get the brotherly love from. So it's amazing how, how if we take the time and look through Things that, you know, we'll find out so many different meanings and why, you know, pastor always stresses that we should have a Greek and a Hebrew dictionary, biblical dictionary somewhere in the house. So sometimes when you read those words, you don't always understand them in the American uh, uh, dictionary, but what the true context behind the word and what it's meaning. So, right. Amen. 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 Well, when I think about love, I mean, love is just the main thing that God gave us, you know, right. and it's and it's all over the Bible. You can read the Bible all the time. It says love, 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 love. Yes, it's in the Ten Commandments too. Love thy neighbor, and 
and you got to love your enemies too. You know, keep your enemies close. You know, <laughs> love your enemies. I know you don't love them, but you know what? If you, it's at, at work. I don't, I don't get along with people at work sometimes, but I got to love them because that's what God wants. You know, and whatever God wants, I'm going to do. Right. So love is just like, hmm, like you got to you heat the burning coals over their head, you know, and yeah. just love them. Amen. That's all I got to say. Amen. Very good Bro, point. The Bible good. says uh, she's, uh, she's trying to us. Uh, Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. It just came up in my mind. The Bible said love covers the multitude of sin. And so when I think about love, I think about, okay, people are in sin, but I still have to love them. Uh, I can't just I still have to love them. And we have to remember, too, that we were in sin. So love covers a multitude of sin. Yes. And, um, you know, so I... Try my best to, you know, not to judge because of what I like, what they're doing or not. But just love them and ask God to forgive them and ask God to help me to love my enemies, help me to love those that don't walk up right and poor. And so I get to it. So, a very good point. You got a mic. Okay. Talking about love. We have to love the people, but we don't have to love the sin that they are committing. But the Bible says we do have to love them. We don't um, have to love the sin that they're doing. That's um, where the difference comes. Basically, to summarize it, there is no option. This is, uh, as they say in the military, this will be mandatory. Right. You have to love everyone regardless. It says, love the ones that even hate you, mistreat you, stay you off to your job, lied on you. You still have to love them. Remember that when they was uh, persecuting Jesus, he still loved them. He still loved them. We have to show love. And so you have to start practice on the ones that like, I was, when I, before I got saved, if you, know, if you got on the wrong nerve, I didn't want to be bothered with you. I don't feel that way anymore. But I realize everything I'm doing is working. Right. If I let that one thing stop me, it's such a I, I've been trying to teach so when I teach my young people, and by young people I mean my, my children, my neighbor, teenagers, two things I always tell them. One, your flesh is not a freight of going to hell. Your flesh is not afraid of going to hell. Your flesh is not afraid of It's going back to the dirt from when it came. Your soul will pay for what you, for what you allowed your body to lead you into. So, which one should probably be in the forefront? Your soul. Let your spirit and your soul go toward God because your flesh, you don't care. Right? That's one thing I always tell them. Second thing, I, I teach and I've been stressing it with my youngest one, especially. And I said, I think whatever you do, the Bible says that if a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make his enemies be at peace with him. He didn't say he make his enemies happy. He said he make him make him be at peace with you. So if your enemy start kicking up. Turn around and ask yourself, all my ways pleasing the Lord. It has nothing to do with this. You said somebody made you lose your job. Okay, you know what? There's a higher calling. Jesus was on the cross. He knew there was a high calling. There was a high purpose. They told him to position to heal yourself. Come down off the cross. He's like, you have no clue what I'm trying to do for you. So I'm going to look over there. That's what I'm saying. we got to see that too. What happens to me is not based on anybody else. If God's got a blessing for me, he opens doors and no man can close. And he closes doors and no man can open. Guess what? Whatever I'm going to get, going to come from him. So if something is not acting right in my life, get the one I need to talk to. That's what I said, Lord, you know what? You are a perfect husband for me because you're perfect. If there's a problem between me and you, I know who the problem is. It's me. And I know who can help me. It's you. See? So, so that's what I tell my son. I said, sweetheart, don't look at other people when man and this man. I get so sick of hearing that from our young people. Nobody's gonna keep you. You work hard and you please God. God will make sure you get what you're gonna get, and can't nobody stop it. That is something I've tried to drill into him. So go, turn around and look at yourself. Go back to that altar and repent. Lord, you know, I haven't really been listening to my mom. Or Lord, I haven't really been reading my Bible. Or Lord, you know, 
I'm sorry if I thought this way or got this way or said this thing. Go back and repent. Clean your life up. And then you, you watch God turn it around. Very good comments from everyone. Repent. But God just saw it. It's too much hatred. You don't have to go too far. You need to turn on your cell phone and someone is shooting someone. They don't even know what. You know, we have to show love. And we got a, a losing a time, but we're going to cover everything. I want to go to verses 8 and 9. Verses 8 is a really good one. Right. And it's for a thing thing being you. And abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when he was talking about barren, he was not talking about childbearing. He was talking about being useless right. in the house of the Lord. Right. But when you come, as the Bible says, that we all have gifts. And the Lord, and Lord wants us to use it. And so if, if I'm not doing something and someone might get mad and I'm in the house of the Lord, when I have to really look at it, I am actually useless because I'm not able to, I'm not doing anything. I got talent to do it, but I'm just not going to do it. Right. Every time you ask me to do something, I'm going to come up with a reason why I can't do it. So I become useless in the house of the Lord. And he says, uh, uh, nor unfruitfulness in the knowledge and our fruitfulness comes out to be that lazy idle or they unproductive. And so I guess sometimes we say sometimes the easy thing is uh, sometimes we may just want to come to church, but God gives us talent maybe to sing, maybe to usher. I don't know what your talent is. I don't know, but he gave us the talent. There's something that we can do in the house of the Lord that we don't have to be idle and we don't have to be useless, or we don't want to preserve our energy. There is something you can do. You can finance committee, the building committee. There is something you can do. Clean the church, do something. Right. There's something that you can do. Because there's so many jobs in the church to do. There are so many. When you start seeing them, you'll realize that we can utilize all the help. That's why a lot of times the pastor would kind of try to find out what is your specialty. You yeah. did <laughs> He's going to try to figure out how the church can benefit from that. That's right. Amen. If you're an electrician, then he wants to know that. Right. Instead of calling out an electrician, then you can do that because electricity is very expensive. And it was just, Peter was just saying that we didn't want to uh, be sit in those categories. That basically we have the knowledge, but we're not going to use it. And there are a lot of people that have the knowledge and would not share it. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to cover this. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And saying that when we are new in Christ, we are, we are blind, spiritually blind. We just don't know. We can't see far off because in our own mind, we considered ourselves good people. Maybe I didn't go out and rob nobody. But and spiritually, I'm blind. And I cannot see. I'm, I'm basically nearsighted. I can just see for a short distance because I just got in here. When I started reading with that, when I first got in the church, I couldn't figure out what they were talking about in that Bible to save my life. I know what he was talking about. I feel like they say Japanese or what, man? So I couldn't get it. I was... I was new in Christ. Right. And so I had to go and, and trade this Bible in for a new one, give me a study Bible to help give me a halfway chance to understand it. Right. But as I did that, I started to grow and I started to understand. But I was blind, not blind like you say on your side. I was blind spiritually. Right. Yeah. And, and the verse number 10 is saying, whereby the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling. An election for sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. And as I was reading, it was saying that for each job that you have, there is a qualification for that job. That's right. You just don't walk in there one day and say, okay, I'm going to fly this airplane. That's right. No, no, no. You have to have some qualification. And so what Peter was saying is that making sure that your position is certified in the Lord. 
So if he come here, but says you're calling and let you is for sure. Make you sure that you're doing everything that you're supposed to do. As Pastor Brown always say, it should he crack the sky right now, which way would you go? Right, man. So that's what he's saying, making sure your calling and election is for sure. You can't save me, you have to save yourself. Right, man. Everybody, one time, there's one time where you can be selfish, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pass. I know that's right. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Amen. So verse 12, the verse 11 says, for so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Anyone want to comment on my read 12? Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. And at this time, Peter realized that his days are numbered. Yep. It kind of since we in um, February it kind of reminds me of Martin Luther King when, when they were telling him That's that right. his life was going to be. He knew that, but he said, "I got to keep going." That's right. And that was done for us. And so Peter knew that he was going to be persecuted. And sometimes we are in this position that we're going to be in position. Let's face it. We all lost a lot of friends when we got saved. Amen. Oh, Lord, they just, they, they didn't want to have nothing to do with me. They thought I was crazy. I was one of the best things on earth when I wasn't saved. But when I got saved, they, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, if it, if it came down to it, we got into a battle, they tried to kill me. I wasn't one of them anymore. Verse 13 says, Jay, I think it be. As long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. And so sometimes what we want to do is uh, we don't want to uh, take all the knowledge with us. You know, when we get ready to go, you know, when pastor and get ready to leave, it, that someone got to be here to take over this church Amen. or whoever, whatever position we hold in the church. We don't want to just leave that position and let someone struggle. It's going to be filled. But it, they're going to have to struggle to uh, get to where you were. Amen. And verse 14 said, Knowing that surely I must put put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. It says that I, I like to think about when Jesus was on the cross. I mean, I mean, the Last Supper when Jesus knew that what was going to happen. But his attitude remained the same. Amen. You know, I read with somebody with that movie, The Bucket List, when they thought they were dying, they went out and spent all, charged all their credit cards and everything. That's the way the world is. You know, they thought they were dying, so they said, well, I'm going to go out and charge all these credit cards and just having a good time. And then the doctor came back and told them that not diagnosis was a mistake. <laughs> they said, what am I going to do with all these? But uh, some people, once they find out that they're leaving, their concern is not about you. Amen. But not about passing on their knowledge and information so that the uh, the, the kingdom will continue to, to uh, perform. Uh, Dick, I saw you with your mic holding. Yeah. Um, you know, in these last uh, two, three scriptures, you know, Paul teaches, uh, excuse me, Peter teaches us another lesson as well right. about priorities. Right. You know, I've said this often, Dick, and you know, uh, if something is not important to you, you won't make it a priority ever, period. In the store, it just won't be a priority. And Peter was teaching us that Christ is so important. The continuing of the gospel is so important that even when he knew he was about to die, whether it was on his deathbed, he was two weeks away, a week away, whatever it was, he wanted to make sure that he didn't leave without reminding. Because if you look at the scripture, it says, look what it says. It says, uh, 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 put you always in the memory. Put always in remembrance, right, of these things, though you know them. So it's a reminder, right? So he's talking to the saints. And so even in, in, in us, we have to be reminded about the word of God. We don't remember it all, but we have to be reminded because some of us walk around and we all do it. I'm going to say that we all have differences of opinion on, a, on various topics about something. And we stand strong and firm to that. But every now and again, we need to be reminded that that's really not what's important. What's important is the word of God. 
and make sure that we deliver the word of God to our, to our family, our friends, our co-workers. And this just shows me, Peter just shows me that even, even when he knew he was leaving, he wasn't concerned about anything else except to continue to spread the gospel. I'm about to say hallelujah. Amen. Let's just on as we close out. I was going to make it quick. I love what he just said because so it's like somebody saying, have you ever heard, have you ever told the children, oh, don't get fresh your teeth? I know, mom. Okay, yeah, but you still need to be reminded, right? And that's, this, is, this is exactly what, what Peter is telling us today. He's reminding us of, of what we need to do, right? Okay. So, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and so, and so, when he said up here, but not number nine, but he that liked these things. These things are all the things he said in four, five, six, and seven. Because in eight, he said, For if these things abound in you, being you and they abound in you, right? He's saying, If you do all this stuff, you will not be, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful. But if you like those things, you are short sighted. You cannot see a fall off, right? And so, and so he said, So let me remind you of it. I was telling my children, <laughs> I said, uh, one, 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 uh, when my, when my youngest daughter, Angie, we, we got to met her, she comes, she says, Mama, I am trying so hard. I told her I want to be a godly woman. You know, I'm on my own. I want to be a godly woman. I want to pray. I want to ask him to help me. To, you know, I said, you know, Asia, I know, I now know what John meant when he wrote, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in truth. Peter was saying something similar right here. He's like, I'm gonna remind you because I, Jesus already showed me I'm gonna put, lay off, I'm gonna lay down, I'm gonna go meet Jesus. He showed me that I'm gonna put off this my tabernacle. It's like his body. He said he's gonna put off his tabernacle. He's gonna let it die. That's what he's telling him. He said, I'm gonna remind you right now. And I put it in a book so you can keep reading it. And that's what I'm trying to do for my children because it's not about me. And oh, by the way, it will actually comfort them to read his words later. Come on, y'all. Peter, Peter, I mean, come on, the captain considered Peter the first pope. Yeah, I know that, right? No, they do. They consider, they consider the Apostle Peter the first pope. That's why they call it the fisherman's ring. Peter was a fisherman. So anyway, but, but that's the point. But you can still read his words and you can be comforted. Amen. I want to thank everyone for your support, the comments, and uh, it was really great. Thanks for all the cooperation and everything. Uh, as we close there, I hope that everyone that's hearing us online and was able to get something from this. Uh, if you had anything that was unclear, put it in the chat line. Someone will return that back to you after, as soon as possible. At this time, we're going to go ahead and move further. We're going to move into our offertory. And we ask that everyone that can give at least $5. And we ask that you also support our scholarship fund. And we ask that you give at least $0.25. Cent. And in order to qualify for that, the only qualifications are that you attend Sunday school three consecutive Sundays in a row and the path to sign off on. Amen. We're going to ask the old deacon Austin if he'll help us with the uh, offering. Everybody ought to go to Sunday school.